Hello, my name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to the TBR for the Trans Rights Readathon. This is a readathon started on a book talk, and it's one of those rare instances where it came then over to BookTube. Uh, this was created by Sim Kern, who uh, wanted to take readathons back to their roots before book talk, book to book bloggers had readathons as just a fun community thing. They are originally meant to be fundraisers. And this one is incredibly important. If you've been paying any kind of attention at all, you'll notice that a lot of states have set up different bills trying to strip trans people of their rights and basically trying to break up families that dare to have trans people in it. This is very bad. So, the Trans Rights Readathon is not just a readathon where we are reading trans books, either books uh, by trans people or non-binary, that spectrum, gender non-conforming, but also you are meant to raise money in it. Now, some of the bigger creators are uh, like going to their followers to be like, you can pledge, but I think for most people participating in this, you're probably going to be donating your own money. Uh, so it's very loose. It's decentralized organizing. The idea is just to get the word out and get money raised, not to get caught up in rules, not to get caught up in all organizing around one specific person. In fact, the uh, originator of the readathon has said, like, don't tag them on uh, TikTok because things are getting shadow banned. So uh, in general, everyone kind of gets to choose how they're divvying up the money that they're fundraising and what organization it's going to. So what am I doing for the fundraising? The organization I'm going to be donating to is a local one in my area called Clock Inc. My husband and I have donated to them before and they are not trans specific. However, they are physical place specific. This is a, a community center arranged specifically for queer youth to have a safe space. Now, we live in a red state, and this is just over the border into a blue state. So, in some cases, this could be helping a, a queer youth literally escape political stuff. Um, and I just like the idea of a physical space that kids in my area can be safe in. Um, because defense funds are nice and all that kind of stuff, but... I work in elementary school. I fostered kids. I, I worry about physical safety a lot. So knowing that there is at least one third place, if you know what a concept of a third place is, it's basically a place that you can just go to hang out that doesn't require money. Uh, I like the idea of that being there for queer youth. And we've donated before, uh, so we're already aware of how that works. And uh, the way I'm going to be donating is not by books or chapters, but by pages. I already measure my reading in pages uh, in my bullet journal. I have a little outline calendar and I say, you know, this is the book. This is the number of pages. And I really like the idea of being able to be like, I fundraised X amount of dollars today. Uh, so the idea currently is to do five cents a page with the goal of a thousand pages throughout the week. That will be a little bit more a day than what I usually do. I usually opt for a hundred pages a day, which would lead me to 700 pages a week. So this isn't even that much more. Um, and I know that that $50 end goal is what we've donated before in the past. So I know that it can fit into our budget pretty well. And if I do go over, I'm not going to be going over by any giant amounts that are going to majorly change that amount. If it's a, if a couple dollars more, that's probably not going to be a big deal. But I just really like, I like that idea of being able to be like, aha, this many pages, this much money today, even if I haven't finished a book yet. But now let's go on to what am I reading? <laughs> First up is Mazarin Blues by Al Hess. This is a sci-fi set in an art deco world, or at least with an art deco protagonist, who has to have an AI in his head because everyone in this world has to have an AI in their head. But the upgrades to the beta version of this AI seem to have weird after effects. There are rumors that AIs are forcing their owners to, let's use the TikTok term, unalive themselves. And uh, Reed, our protagonist, is very nervous that it's going to happen to him. But actually, his AI seems to be falling in love with him which is the weirdest queer romance I've ever heard, but I love this idea. I have read uh, another book by this author before, and I enjoyed that one. We've been Twitter mutuals for years, years, years now. And um, I really, I've had this one on the back burner for so long. It's one of those, 
I know I'll get to it eventually because I love weird AI stuff. It's probably one of my favorite tropes of sci-fi is weird AI stuff. This isn't even the first time of like an other entity getting into your head, falling in love with you that I've read before. Uh, but this one I think is more romantic love than that other one was. Uh, so I'm excited for this one. Uh, I get the gist from the cover that this is going to have a lot of aesthetic vibes. Admittedly, I don't know that much about Art Deco. Um, that wasn't really one of my favorite studies when I was getting a history degree. But uh, I like the fact that there is so much emphasis on aesthetics. Uh, and this is a series, I believe. So if I like it, I can continue. And I know for a fact that the author uh, is trans and that there are other queer char characters and uh, I believe disability rep within the story. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Speaking of a book I picked because of disability rep, the next is Home Within Skin by Gem Zero. This is one that I've had on my 2 by TBR uh, for so long because I knew I wanted to add it to my uh, neurodivergence and disability and genre fiction list, but uh, I also remember that it had a trans protagonist. So like, awesome, two birds, one stone. And uh, this is another sci-fi all about a young homeless trans man who stumbles into this hotel and discovers one of the alien refugees that have been coming into the city um, about to film a porno. And said trans man gets himself invited into the porno. And then a romance happens. Something about alien sex worker porno just speaks to me. <laughs> I don't know if it's my love for weird kitschy stuff, but uh, I love sci-fi romance, one of my favorite romance subgenres, and I really like the idea of uh, an alien human romance in general, but um, most of the time alien human romances seem to be very hit, so making it queer sounds like even more fun. And um, I've been looking at this author's other work a lot, too. So if I like this one, I can jump into more stuff. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the disability rep is uh, because it's not on the synopsis. But I have talked with the author on Twitter and they've mentioned that all of their books has some element of like chronic illness or disability. So I do know it's in there and I'm hoping to get it on that video as well at some point. It is very slow in building, but we're working on it eventually. And uh, more kitschy sci-fi fun is always good. These next two books prove that I do still read recently published trad books. You know, as long as they're gay. So, <laughs> first up, we have The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. You'll probably see these on a lot of TBRs for this readathon, but this is essentially, uh, we must help the sun god continue to do the thing the sun god must do so all of these demigods are like competing and the winner is the big winner and the loser gets sacrificed i think i only looked over that very briefly i didn't really need to know a lot about the synopsis because everyone has raved about it i loved aiden thomas's other book so like i kind of just assumed that it's already going to be good <laughs> so I might want to reread the synopsis before I go into it, but uh, again, this is probably going to be one of the more common picks. I've seen it on several TBRs on Book Talk already, um, and I usually do pride myself on being the the weird indie rec person. And rest assured, I have already recommended the more weird indie books on Book Talk for this readathon. Um, I, I might. Tag it at the end of this here um, in case you want some recs in it rather than trying to do a whole extra video for it. But uh, keep that in mind as well. I am still maintaining my indie nerd status even as much as I just love Aiden Thomas's work. And there's just something about a giant competition with trials that just, I just love it. <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping I will love this one as well. Up next is The Witch King by H.E. Edgman. This is a, I believe, YA fantasy all about uh, a trans man that was once betrothed as a witch to the fae prince because we must unionize the witches in the fae. That's not the word. A line. <laughs> and uh, he was like, nope, bye, fleas. But then said betrothed uh, comes after him and is like, nah, I still count this as a betrothal. And uh, said witch is like, no, 
Uh, so he starts essentially aligning himself with the Fey Prince's like enemies to try and undermine the betrothal. Uh, but then starts to realize that his betrothed, which was also his like childhood best friend, um, is actually still in there. You know, the the prince that he loved all those years ago is is still in there. And oh crap, he is now aligned with the enemies. Uh, this is not the first time that I've heard that plot set up in a story before and I loved it then because I've read that in a an Afrofuturism book arranged romance before um, and I love the angst <laughs> the angst of that oh no I'm developing feelings but I've already betrayed you it's great top tier pining love it so I'm hoping for that I'm hoping for some top tier angst and what have I done realizations um, but you know queer this time and uh, I'm hoping that the hype I've seen around it is as good as everyone says or else I don't know how long it'll be before I read a, a recently released trad book again. <laughs> this next one uh, the author actually already knows is going to be on this TBR because I had to message them to ask how to pronounce their last name. Hi Esme! So <laughs> I will be reading uh, Sir Callie and the Champions of Helston by Esme Symes Smith. See, you always got a message to ask for that phonetic pronunciation because I would have not said that correctly. This is a mid-grade set in a fantasy world where all girls must be magic users and all boys must be knights, but our protagonist is non-binary and they're like, no. <laughs> and basically this is them fighting to uh, become the knight that they need to be while everyone else is telling them no and they gain friends along the way. And uh, I really like that concept because a lot of times in these fantasy books where the protagonist is like maligned or misunderstood they tend to like become this like only misunderstood person in the kingdom so this idea of let's not just look at how this uh strict binary is hurting our protagonist but also everyone else that maybe isn't non-binary but is still hurt by it and i like that concept i've heard great things and yes i know what you're saying margaret isn't this uh, another trad published book after you just said you barely read them yes but hear me out uh one i bought this from an independent bookstore okay counting that for the pop sugar prompt and two uh the author and i have been mutuals for or <laughs> I don't even know how long now uh, before this book was published maybe even before they were wrapped I can't remember how far back it was uh, so I love getting to be there on the journey I probably should have read this sooner I'm sorry <laughs> but uh, it definitely counts now and I'm really excited that I already had at least a couple books already on my TBR uh, for this readathon because you know me I'm still under that lower the TBR challenge I didn't want to have to go out and get a bunch of new books so having some on there is great and this is just cute aside from the fact that the, the independent books were put a sticker on the front why do they do that uh, regardless I also have the fancy bookmark to go with it and I'm looking forward to this one um, partially because the fact that it is a mid-grade means it's gonna read quickly because I have not tried to read five books in a week for a readathon since like 2019 <laughs> so this might be iffy I'm not even sure that I'm going to be able to to read all of these books in that time um but we'll work on it so that is it my list uh fingers crossed that the couple of books i'm waiting on from the library come in on time um and i don't know that i'll actually read all five of these in one week i tried to make my tbr to be like a lot of ya in mid-grade or uh, kitschy romance because those are all the genres that i read the fastest and i'm hoping that that helps but a lot of these are dealing with really heavy topics and the isms and trigger warnings so who knows it might it might become depressing and i might have to slow down but thankfully because i am doing it based on page count instead of books even if i don't finish a book in the time frame i can still count those pages toward my personal goal in the readathon and that's really what counts here um i already know that even if I don't reach the thousand page mark, I, I'm probably going to be donating the $50 regardless. Like I said, we've donated that before. I know it fits into our budget. I'm not going to not donate to Queer Kids in Danger just because I read a few pages less than needed, like whatever. Um, but if you are participating in this TBR, please let me know. Do you have any uh, trans recs to give to other people? Do you need some? Let me insert that TikTok here real quick. In honor of the Trans Rights Readathon, here are a couple indie trans books you might not have heard of before. 
The Orchid and the Lion by Gabriel Hargrave. Adult sci-fi, a lot of political themes, a lot of SW representation, and a kind of downer ending, but it is a series. Aliens Are Real, book one of the Caring for Your Clown series by Oleander Bloom. YA sci-fi, interdimensional clowns, but like the fun kind, but triple check those trigger warnings. Otter Still by D.N. Brin, adult fantasy with selkies and underwater anti-capitalism. Stray Dogs by Freya Faust, dark urban fantasy with a lot of magic fights, and you can watch the egg cracking in real time. If you have any recs, please leave them in the comments. I don't know how much I'll be able to participate that exact week, but I always like more queer books on my list. That was fun. Regardless, um, please let me know your intentions on doing this. Um, they are trying to do a Google survey to uh, see just how much money was raised after the fact. And I'm really hoping that's going to be a nice big number because I, we all need some good news at this point in time. Um, regardless, please stay safe. Please know you are loved and supported. And please don't be afraid to turn to people around you for help if you need it. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.